The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. So if you're interested in programming yourself so that the actions that you take are automatic by nature and from a place of not resistance or forcefulness, then this book is for you. You see, we have our conscious and our subconscious mind. Our conscious mind is the watchman at the gate. Its function is to protect your subconscious mind from false impressions. So your conscious mind is your thinking mind. It's the mind that you use to rationalize, to think about ideas, to say you're going to do something. But it's really the subconscious mind that's in control. It's the reactive mind or the emotional mind. It's a part of you that motivates you to do the things that you have to do. For example... Let's say you decide to go to the gym every day, Monday to Friday. Well, that's a conscious decision that you made in your conscious mind. Now, you might be able to willpower your way into the gym for the first few days, and then all of a sudden you're met with internal resistance. You don't want to wake up early. You don't feel like doing it. It's stressing you out. All these different kinds of things happen. Well, all that stuff that's happening is a result of your subconscious mind. You see, your subconscious mind in a scenario like that is saying, this is not the normal thing. We don't normally do things like this, so we're just not going to do it anymore. And as a result, you'll probably stop. And if you stick with it, if you stick with it long enough, if you essentially push yourself to go to the gym every day, eventually the subconscious mind's programming gets rewritten And it no longer resists going to the gym. And I speak from my own personal experience. When I was in my 20s, it was very hard for me to go to the gym. Now, I'm 36, and for the last three and a half years, I've been consistent. Never missed a gym day and never missed a running day, unless it was by choice in which I had a substitute during the week, etc. So why did it get easier? Well, it got easier because the repetition of doing the thing over and over again programmed the subconscious mind to make it reality. And once it became the norm, there was no longer any resistance. Now, that's very powerful because if you think about it, the same applies in behaviors that we do. Social behaviors, business behaviors, productive behaviors, any type of behaviors, both positive and negative are driven habitually by the subconscious mind. We might be able to consciously decide to do something, but it's really the subconscious mind that's going to create lasting results. And this actually goes beyond that in this book. I'm going to talk about this. But let's first let's look at the conscious mind and get a little clearer with it. So you have the power to choose. You can choose health and happiness. You could choose to be friendly or you could choose to be unfriendly. Choose to be cooperative, joyous, friendly, lovable, and the whole world would respond. This is the best way to develop a wonderful personality. Your thoughts and the images you hold in your mind and how you feel about stuff or how you feel about those thoughts and images are going to imprint itself on the subconscious mind through repetition. And the subconscious mind is going to create that reality for you by changing your actions and your behaviors to reflect. And he also talks about how the subconscious mind is actually connected to infinite intelligence, the infinite intelligent or the infinite mind of God, as discussed very thoroughly in Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, which is the mind, the universal mind, where all ideas and unknown knowledge to humanity exists, which we draw upon to create in reality. So in other words, The subconscious mind is very powerful. The subconscious mind is the mind responsible for healing the body. It's the part of our mind that regulates breathing and a heartbeat and grows hair and all these kind of functions that we have no idea how to do consciously, but the subconscious mind exists to do that. So what we want to do is we want to tap into the power of the subconscious mind to do these very simplistic things, like, for example, building a business or going to the gym and exercising and getting in shape is really just a matter of doing a handful of disciplined actions every day. 
But because we are not motivated to do it or it's not part of our normal state, it can be very difficult and there's a lot of resistance and pressure. So as a result, we might start and we stop and we might start again and stop and never really make a tremendous amount of progress. Well, if we realize that we have access to the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind is very good at creating habit habitual behaviors and figuring out very intelligent solutions, then we can actually learn how to communicate with the subconscious mind through a process and tap into that to make those things we want to do very easy and natural. Now, it doesn't mean that the actual tasks are easy. It doesn't mean that, you know, working out is just going to seem like a breeze. But what it means is that we'll actually enjoy the process of working out. We might even find the joy in the pain. We'll actually enjoy the process of building a business. We'll find joy in the pain. And that reality is governed by our subconscious mind. Or you could also say that paradigm, which we're not going to cover into deep detail. Maybe I'll do another video on it, is really a component of the subconscious mind. So you're like a captain navigating a ship. He must give the right orders. And likewise, you must give the right thoughts and images to your subconscious mind, which controls and governs all your experiences. Okay, so if you think positively, and you impress positivity into your subconscious mind, your subconscious mind is going to get your body and your actions and your reality to produce positivity. Okay? It's going to flow out from you. Same thing with negativity. Let's talk about the subconscious mind. Now, the subconscious mind is different than the conscious mind in the sense that the subconscious mind doesn't judge and make decisions. The conscious mind does that. The subconscious mind just responds to what is imprinted into it by the conscious mind. Now, when we were kids, we didn't have much of a development of the conscious mind. So whatever kind of information that was being fed to us by our parents and teachers and students imprinted itself into our subconscious mind. And some of it was positive and some of it was negative. In later stages of our life, we start to find out some of those negative qualities. Maybe it's low self-esteem. Maybe it is the inability to stay focused, or maybe it's desire to want to eat junk food or something like that. All that stuff was programmed when we were young in our subconscious mind and our subconscious mind is causing us to do and behave in a certain way. Now, when we get to a certain point in our life, when we get access to a book like this, we can figure out how to reprogram the subconscious mind. Now, is it hard or is it easy? Well, that depends. You see, we have a lot of contradictory information flowing into our brain every day. You might decide today that you want to build your business, well, the majority of the world thinks that building a business is hard and it's very stressful and it requires long hours of a lot of pressure and a lot of hardship on your life and family. Well, if the majority of the world is communicating to you from that perspective, then in your subconscious mind, that is how you're going to conduct your day to day activities and business. Now, if you meet a few entrepreneurs or a few business owners that are contrarian to that in the sense that they flow through business day to day as a way of life and they enjoy the process and they're able to create success and they do things and they're very optimal in the things they do and they create business outcomes or results by flowing rather than resisting and stress and you're surrounded by only those people. Well, that will become what is impressed in your subconscious mind and that is how you're going to carry your business activities. Now, if you have a combo of both, say 50%, you're surrounded by these business owners that tend to flow in their business activities, and the other 50%, you're surrounded by stressful business people, well, your subconscious mind is getting now contradictory information because the information from both parties is being placed into your mind, and it's essentially fighting in your subconscious mind, creating confusion, and what you've got is confusion. Maybe sometimes you behave in an optimal way, and sometimes you don't. The same thing applies for health and fitness. We are constantly bombarded with information about eating food that is bad for us, junk food, advertising that promotes it. Now, when you decide that you want to eat healthy and you go to the gym, you might read some positive blogs, watch some good videos on YouTube, encouraging what is good to eat and how to exercise. And then for the rest of the day, 
you're bombarded with advertising that is making you want to eat the junk food. So now you've got internal resistance. So when you wake up the next day and you try to eat healthy and you try to go to the gym, there's a lot of internal resistance and you try to push through it and you push through it and you push through it. Now, some people actually stay pushing through it for many years and they stress themselves out. Well, a small group of people who are really wise and understand the powers of subconscious mind realize that they need to remove the information that is contrary to what they want. They need to prevent themselves from being in situation where these places of temptation exist, like certain types of advertisement or certain places where they're more likely to, to be motivated to eat junk food. They recognize that they don't have a resentment towards those things, but just by not having the subconscious mind programmed by contrarian information, they can continue to fill up their mind with positive information that will help them get the results they want, and thus they are flowing in nature towards achieving the results. They don't have resistance towards eating healthy. They don't have resistance towards exercise, and they're able to do it with ease, without stress, and it becomes a way of life. And because they do it for an extended period of time, it gets further embedded into the subconscious mind. Okay, Whatever your conscious mind assumes and believes to be true, your subconscious and all the blessings of life will accept and bring to pass. Believe in good fortune, divine guidance, and right action. So we're going to go a level deeper. We talked about business, let's say, and exercise and eating healthy, but whatever you believe in reality to be true, whether you got information to validate it or not validate it, whatever you believe to be true, your subconscious mind is going to act upon that. So if you believe that you can hit your goals and you fully believe it, your subconscious mind will go to work to get you to do the things to achieve the goal. And we mentioned earlier that the subconscious mind is connected to the infinite intelligence. So the more you're in alignment with the high vibration of infinite intelligence, and by the way, I'm going to make a video talking about vibrations, uh, uh, thought vibrations some other time. The more you're in alignment, the more likely you are going to draw out very unique, intuitive information to do the things you have to do with a lot ease, a lot uh, faster of speed, etc. However, you must believe that it's possible really believe that it's possible. If you have doubt, then you are impressing into your subconscious mind doubt. And doubt will be expressed to the subconscious mind in the actions you take. If you're for sure about the very specific goal that you're going to achieve and what's required to get that, you're going to move into action to achieve that goal. For example, let's say you want to hit a certain level of success in business. And by achieving that success requires you to make 20 to 30 sales per month for whatever it is you're selling. Well, if you believe that you are going to hit that goal, then when you go make those sales, your behavior, your communication style, the energy that you put out in the presentation is going to more likely persuade the other person to sign the deal. That's because you come from a place of confidence, true core confidence that has been projected outwards from the information that you've been feeding in your subconscious mind. If you've got doubts, then you're going to bring the doubts to that table. And when you communicate, you will communicate the doubts. You might do it at a small level, or you could do it at a very obvious high level. But whatever it is that you believe, you will communicate outwards. So it's very important to make sure that you are only consuming the information that is required to help you hit your goals. So when it comes to programming the subconscious mind, you must have goals. We're going to talk about this in a moment, but right now we're just talking about the difference between the subconscious and the conscious mind. Your subconscious mind contain, uh, controls all the vital processes in your body and knows the answer to all your problems. Think good and good falls. Think evil and evil falls. You are what you think all day long. Okay, so the rhythm of your heart, the way your hair grows, the skin rejuvenation, healing of the wounds, a lot of different bodily movements, etc., and functions of the body are controlled by the subconscious mind. We're essentially trying to figure out how to tap into this same power that controls these elements of the body. And a lot of spiritual texts and concepts talk about this. 
tapping into this inner potential, these infinite potential. We have this potential within us. It's just that a lot of people don't believe that they can tap into it. So in this book, he talks about very specific ways of tapping into it. And you have to put it into action and you have to first believe that it's possible. If you don't believe it's possible, then this stuff is never going to work for you. That's the trick. Think good and good falls. Think evil and evil falls. You are what you think all day long. So that being said, ensure that you are feeding your mind with information that encourages that you have control, that you have the power, that you are able to control your reality by very pragmatic means, including reprogramming your subconscious mind so you conduct yourself in an optimal way. Whether the object of faith is real or false, you will get results. Your subconscious mind responds to the thought in your mind. Look upon faith as a thought in your mind, and that will suffice. The infinite intelligence within your subconscious mind can reveal to you anything you need to know at any moment or every moment of time and point of space, provided you are open-minded and receptive. So Napoleon Hill's Thinking Grow Rich, he talks about the subconscious mind and how the subconscious mind is connected to the infinite intelligence of God, the universal mind, the God mind. It is from there where we pull the unique information that has not manifested into the world. And it is through this process of faith and belief that you're able to tap into the infinite intelligence through the conduit of the subconscious mind. So whatever information you consume and you imprint on your subconscious mind is either opening up or distorting this connection. So it's very important from this day onwards that you make sure that you purify your mind with clean, clear thoughts and clean, clear information to open up the connection between your conscious mind, your subconscious mind, and the universal mind. Let's talk about programming your subconscious mind. Whatever you impress on your subconscious mind is expressed on the screen of space and thoughts entertained in your conscious mind as conditions, experiences, and events. Therefore, you should carefully watch all ideas. Okay, so make sure you are not consuming conflicting thoughts. The most important thing you can do is pick a single goal, a single worthy goal. I recommend that you listen to Earl Nightingale's A Stranger's Secret, and I recommend that you listen to it over and over and over and over again. I've been listening to that audio now since 2005, and for periods, I listen to it two or three times a day for months. It's the same audio, but the audio was written to inspire the power in your mind. In other words, it is designed to get you to think a certain way. And it is through that repetition of thinking that certain way that you're able to filter out the negative information by not relying on willpower, but by programming your subconscious mind so it blocks it all out. This doesn't mean you're not aware of it. It just means you don't accept it into your subconscious mind. You've set up walls and barricades and filters so that negative information cannot go into your subconscious mind and get you to act upon it. In that audio, he talks about creating one goal and focusing singly on that one goal. If you do that, your whole life starts to change because how you navigate and how you do things is strictly going to be on that one goal, based on that one goal. Every area of your life is going to be in alignment with that one goal your health, your fitness, your relationships, everything, friendships, is going to be reconstructed from that one goal. So it's important to have that single focused one goal. And then when you have that one goal, focus on it, visualize it, internalize it, meditate upon it, emotionalize it so it imprints itself on the subconscious mind. And then everything that flows from it as far as your actions and thoughts go is going to be result from that singular goal. Everything in your life will change as a result of it. You will take the necessary actions automatically. You will carry yourself with more confidence. So if you want to program your subconscious mind, then understand something. It's the repetition that does it. If you repeat the affirmation with focus, energy, and emotion, and visualization, and imagining yourself already having it, then you're on to programming your subconscious mind. And if you do it daily and uh, day in and day out, you will watch your behaviors change. 
and you will only consume the information that furthers the development of that goal in your subconscious mind, then what will happen is you will start moving faster towards that, but then you will go into alignment, as we mentioned earlier, between the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the universal mind. And that's when real magic starts to happen. Keep your conscious mind busy with the expectation of the best, and your subconscious mind will faithfully reproduce your habitual thinking. If you allow your mind to drift during the day, then understand something. We as humans, habitual creatures, will try to drift towards the negative. That's because we're trying to protect ourselves. And the negativity that we focus on creates protective mechanisms or gets us to analyze situations so that we feel that we've looked at negative situations and we're trying to overcome it. However, that's not the best way to be. The best way to be is to focus on your goal, focus and do only the things necessary towards your goal, consume the information that supports your goal while being aware of what's going on around you. Okay? This doesn't mean that you live in isolation. That's not what this is about. It means that most of the time you're focusing on the things you have to do and you're focusing on the thoughts that you have to have and you speak the words that are empowering by nature that are designed to further impress that goal upon your subconscious mind. And by doing this, the subconscious mind responds. Your subconscious has the answer to all the problems. If you suggest to your subconscious mind prior to sleep, I want to get up at 6 a.m., it will awaken you at that exact time. So the power of the subconscious mind is that a lot of behaviors and things that we should do are things that come out naturally when they are part of the subconscious programming. They don't require willpower and they don't require resistance and force. These kinds of like willpower, resistance, force, limited amount of energy. If we use them and we rely upon them, then in times when we don't have them, we fall apart. So that's not the best strategy to have. The best strategy to have is to reprogram your subconscious mind so that what others consider to be self-discipline is just automatic behaviors. They might see it as self-discipline because they don't understand the power of programming their subconscious mind. Or when they try to program their subconscious mind, they're programming it with information that they want and they're consuming information that's contrarian to that, that is essentially fighting with the inf good information they're putting in. Never use the terms, I can't afford it or I can't do it. Your subconscious mind takes you at your word and sees to it that you do not have the money or ability to do what you want to do. Affirm, I can do all things through the power of my subconscious mind. In order to get the subconscious mind to work positive for you and really tap into it, you must use the power of faith and belief. Napoleon Hill talks about this in Thinking Grow Rich. You absolutely must believe that it is possible to tap into your subconscious mind and you must believe that your goal is going to come true. Now, the interesting thing is, is let's say you have a very high level goal. And when you first affirm it to yourself, when you first visualize it, you might start doubting yourself. But the more you affirm it and the more you visualize it, the more you will start to believe it. And eventually you'll get to the point where there is absolutely no doubt that you believe that you're going to get it. And that's when the real magic starts to happen. But you must hold on and you must fight through all the way till you get to that point. And when I say fight through, I mean that sometimes what's going to happen is that your brain is going to come up with contrary information and it's going to tell you that you can't do it or whatever reason, things are going to happen. And those things are happening because your paradigm does not want to change. If you want to get that result, chances are your paradigm has to change to the point where you're doing a lot of things and you kind of, you're maybe even in a different place. And your paradigm wants to keep you in the place you are right now. So as you focus on that one goal and you begin to affirm it and visualize it, you're going to be met with resistance. That's okay. All you got to do is understand that repetition is key. What are all the ways you could repeat the affirmation? Perhaps you should read books like this as much as you can. Listen to audios and videos that talk more about how to tap into your subconscious mind, how to raise your vibration, positive information that says you can do things on top of focusing on your goal, surrounding yourself with people that empower you rather than people that disempower you, people that talk positively and focus on what can be done and take responsibility rather than passing on the responsibility to someone else. That is how you program the subconscious mind, by affirming to your subconscious mind that that is how reality works. 
by saying to the subconscious mind that this is how reality works and there's no other way it works, it works this way, your subconscious mind then goes to believe that that's how reality works and it starts to get you to navigate towards that direction of your goal. Remind yourself frequently that the healing power is in your subconscious mind. Again, these are multiple angles to get you to believe and firmly, fully believe, not from a superficial level, that the power really is in your subconscious mind. And the healing power is in your subconscious mind. When you get cut and you start to bleed, it's your subconscious mind that governs that part of your body that goes and heals the wound. When you work out in the gym, it's the part of your body or the subconscious mind that goes to work with the intelligence to rebuild the tissues. Feel the joy and restfulness in foreseeing the certain accomplishment of your desire. Any mental picture which you have in your mind is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Even if you can't believe that what it is comes into reality right away, you must hold that thought in your mind. It will eventually find itself into reality some shape or some form. Think about all the great inventions of our time, wireless networks, for example. When somebody first perceived the idea of creating a wireless connection, people being able to talk over radio waves, the chances are that nobody believed him, and they didn't. They actually threw him in jail or mental hospital or something like that. I can't remember what it was. But essentially, he held that belief in his mind despite the fact that everybody did not agree with him. And because of that, we see it in reality today. The same thing with airplanes. Okay, Think of how crazy and wild it is an idea thousands of years ago to believe that you could fly to another continent on an airplane. Well, somebody thought of that and they believed in it and they held it in their mind and they created it in reality. The same thing applies to anything, like even watching YouTube right now, computers. How many things around you right now do you see in your awareness were things that were never existed before, but somebody in their mind was able to picture it and create it into reality because they held on to the belief and they moved towards the goal? Napoleon Hill said in Think and Grow Rich that riches, if they come, and when they do, come in such abundant forms that you'll wonder where they've been uh, your whole life. And this is me paraphrasing it, but essentially what he's saying is it's not a result of hard work. And he even says that. Perish the thought if you think riches is a result of hard work. Now, one way of getting riches is through hard work. However, there are people that get rich not through hard work. They get rich through maybe smart work, or maybe they do work that others consider hard, but they consider fun. Okay, so understand something that the power of the subconscious mind is able to create in reality what it is you put your mind to. And if you impose your agenda on the subconscious mind, like for example, if you believe that you're going to create a lot of wealth, but it's going to come as a result of 50 years of hard work and you're finally going to have it in 50 years, then you're going to create that reality. That's how it's going to be for you because you believe in it. And you're going to believe in it most likely because you see a lot of people doing it that way. But if you believe that there's going to be a way and it's going to be a way that you're going to leave up to infinite intelligence or the power of the subconscious mind, then you're more likely going to be open to possibilities that will be in your favor to create a radical amount of wealth in a shorter period of time. And that's why we see today more than ever before wealth being generated with tech companies and certain opportunities and so forth faster than ever before. When your mind is relaxed and you accept the idea, your subconscious mind goes to work to execute the idea. So the key here is to not impress upon the subconscious mind an idea through force. Because what you're doing is you're essentially inserting into your subconscious mind the vibe and the energy of force. And it's going to make what you're trying to create a reality seem forceful. What you need to do is relax and take a step back and Say that you're going to achieve your goal and do it from a place of warmth and confidence. Not a forceful confidence, but an allowing confidence. And as you relax into that space and you visualize and you affirm that regularly, you will start to believe that more often. That's why some of the best affirmations that you could do, or any type of affirmation programs or audios that are out there, are best when they are presented in a relaxed way. So if the person communicates who's doing the hypnosis audio in a relaxed way, then you relax. And when you relax, you're more suggestive. 
And so we can hypnotize ourselves, you can say, or you can program our subconscious mind, because that's related to the topic we're talking about, by understanding that this is the way to do it. We don't want to impress any type of weird energy or vibe into our subconscious mind that is not going to benefit us, especially if it's a place of resistance and force. But rather, we want to impress a confidence that the reality is the way that it is based on what we say it is from our main goal or our visualization. Think and plan independently of traditional methods. Know that there is always an answer and a solution to every problem. So I mentioned this earlier. If you believe, for example, that creating a business is going to be hard, hard, hard work, and I know I've fallen in this trap myself sometimes, Understand something that you're just creating that in your subconscious mind. You are further, further instilling that idea into subconscious mind every time you think that thought, every time you talk about that thought. There are many ways of doing things, many ways of building a business. There are ways that have never been discovered yet. And any way that has been discovered to build a successful business is only a fraction of the possibilities that exist. So think of people that go and study business, for example. They get so attached to the ideologies that they're being taught that they have a hard time letting go of those ideologies and seeing an alternate way. Okay, so having knowledge is good, but being too attached to a process or a method is not good because it prevents us from seeing unknown possibilities, possibilities that exist, but we just can't see them yet. But if we're open to the fact that those possibilities exist, we're going to more likely see them within our awareness, and we're going to be more likely to execute upon them. Remember, imagination is your most powerful faculty. Imagine what is lovely and of good report. You are what you imagine yourself to be. So, If you believe and see yourself to be a certain way and you feel worthy of your goals, your subconscious mind is going to go and create that for you. You don't attract what you want. You attract who you are. You can change the self-image that you have of yourself by first thinking about the person you want to become or the results that you want to have. And then when you feel doubt in the beginning, understand that the more you affirm that, the more you visualize it, the more that doubt is going to go away. And as it goes away, and when it goes away, you will have this new self-image of yourself, which is now impressed on the subconscious mind, which will then cause your subconscious mind to create that reality for you through your body, through the actions you take. Let's talk about wealth for a moment in the subconscious mind. The feeling of wealth produces wealth. Keep this in mind at all times. So if you don't have access to a lot of money right now, because that's what a lot of people consider wealth to be, having a lot of money, then understand something that you actually have wealth. You have skills, you have knowledge, you have insight, you have energy, you have youthfulness, you have motivation, which are all forms of wealth. We just don't put a quantifiable number on them, but it is those areas and many more that can be translated to creating value for the external world, for people, for others, in which case you will get money in return. Money is just a form of value. Okay, That's all it is. You are wealthy. We are all wealthy. When we believe and we can see the wealth that we have, we can then take that wealth, might not be in the money form, and put it out there, work with it to bring money in. Money is a medium to be able to get paid for our value that we provide and take and exchange with somebody else for goods and services so that we can give them value and they can give us value. That's all it is. If you have any other weirdness surrounding money other than what I just talked about right now, then you're probably creating resistance for yourself for not only money, but other forms of wealth. Okay, so see wealth at a higher level as a form of exchange of energy. The more value you give, the more value comes back. You have a lot of value with you right now that you have not 
been able to recognize. If you reflect upon it, you'll see how much wealth you have in different forms of value outside of the traditional definition of money. You are wealthy. If you keep that with you, hold that with you, you're going to be more accepting and more creative in your thinking and doing because you'll be impressing that idea and that feeling into your subconscious mind. What you consciously affirm, you must not mentally deny a few moments later. This will neutralize the good you have affirmed. So for example, if you wake up in the morning and say, I want to make X amount of money by the end of the year, and let's say that's your goal, that's your number one goal. And then a couple of minutes later, you are consuming information that is about scarcity and how there's not enough money to go around and there's a recession going on. Then what you're doing is you are undoing the possibility of you going beyond the dynamics that you are consuming right there. If you are thinking about how you want to create a massive wealth, and then you're talking about how it's so hard to do it, and even though you're doing it, uh, you're consciously trying to create wealth by focusing pos positively, it's so hard and so forth, you are undoing it. Okay, so whenever a negative thought comes into your mind, you must remove it immediately. You must then move the thought back into your goal, and you must hold on to that thought. This gets easier with time and practice, like with anything. And you must emotionalize and internalize that emotion of achieving and already having that feeling that you will have when you achieve that goal. When you do that, you will carry yourself from that perspective and your subconscious mind will go to work. And because it's connected with the infinite intelligence and because it's far more intelligent than you at a conscious level, it will figure out the fastest ways to make it happen. You don't need to worry about that. But you absolutely must make sure that whatever you consciously affirm, you do not deny with contrarian information. That's why it's really important to make sure that throughout the day, you are focused on doing only the things that move you forward towards your goal, consuming only the information that moves you forward towards your goal, and removing out of your awareness any type of contrarian information, provided that you really want to take advantage of the power that is available to you in your subconscious mind, you would do this. And when you do this, you're going to build a stronger frame, a stronger reality as to what you believe in. And it's going to be harder for negative information to penetrate your mind. Envy and jealousy are stumbling blocks to the flow of health. Rejoice in the prosperity of others. So if you want to create wealth and prosperity in your life, you must genuinely be happy for the wealth and prosperity and contributing to the wealth and prosperity of others all the time. Anytime you have resentment or uh, wishing you had more money than the other person or envy that the other person has more money than you or more prosperity than you, you are actually affirming into your subconscious mind that you don't want wealth in your life. You're creating a block and that block will further imprint itself in your subconscious mind and you will not be able to acquire prosperity. So not only is it better to navigate the world and not feel jealousy towards others so you feel happy, but it's also an important strategy if you want to create prosperity for yourself. You have to be willing and happy for others to have prosperity. Because, we mentioned this earlier, that's a form of value. When you create value, even energetically, when you project value outwards, you attract more value back to you because what you put out will come back to you. The block to wealth is in your own mind. Destroy that block now by getting in a good mental terms with everyone. Okay, so wealth is, if you don't have a lot of wealth right now, it's because of the mental blocks. That's it. It took me a long time to realize this growing up. And when I realized this, I went to work on it. And when I went to work on it, things started to change financially in my life. I started to produce more financial wealth. And when I'm communicating with people, it's very, very apparent where their block is and how they actually create stories to validate their block without actually looking at their block. It's amazing. Okay. And again, I'm not saying this to judge them or look down upon it. It's just very revealing to recognize that I'm doing that also for the higher levels that I want to go at. Okay. So there's blockages in me right now that are preventing me to get to a higher level. However, 
We're arming ourselves with this understanding contained within this book. And we are going to make sure that we put into place the optimal strategies that will produce the results. And it's not like I'm doing this from scratch. I've done this before, and this is just a way of life. Reprogramming the subconscious mind to create more wealth, happiness, better relationships is a ongoing journey and a way of life. That's what it is. There are always higher levels that you can achieve in all areas. And those levels are unlocked by the overcoming of the blocks that get us there. One reason many people simply make ends meet and never have enough money is that they condemn money. What you condemn takes wings and fly away. So again, this goes back to the other point we said about jealousy. What you have as far as relationship with money is going to be further imprinted into your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind is going to go to work to create the reality that you want through the actions and your thought processes, etc. That being said, if you can pinpoint right now, if you have a bad relationship with money, then the next thing you need to do is go to work and remove any type of negativity and bad relationship you have with money. Do you think money is the root of all evil? Do you think rich people are evil? Do you think that you'll never acquire wealth and you're not worthy of it? What are all the stories you tell yourself that are negative about money? And how can you re rewrite an affirmation and visualize the opposite and put it into place? Go to work on it. Go place yourself in scenarios where you will meet people that have a lot of money that are really good people. In my life, everybody that I've ever met who has money nowadays is a good person. They're contributing to society. They give a lot to charities. They, they grow themselves. They educate their kids. They educate many people around them. They are insatiable about giving value. Now, back in the days when I had a bad relationship with money, it would be very easy for me to find people that were, you could say, evil with money. That's because whatever you believe, your subconscious mind is going to create. So if you believe that there's positivity and value and goodness surrounding money, your subconscious mind is going to place you in scenarios where you're going to find that. So let's talk about happiness, because happiness is something that we all want to achieve. Give thanks for all your blessings several times a day. Furthermore, pray for the peace, happiness, and prosperity of all members of your family, your associates, and all people everywhere. Understand something. Happiness comes from within. It never comes from the external world. The only thing that comes from the external world is a reflection of who we are. So if we are happy inside and we are unconditionally happy inside, we will always see happiness in the external world. Always. And this is a journey. So you go through phases where sometimes where you're not as happy and you'll see it. You'll see people treating you kind of weird and uh, unhappiness being projected onto you. And it'll just seem like a constant streak of unhappiness. But when you understand the power of the subconscious mind, you can catch yourself before you go on a downhill spiral. You can re- adjust your thought processes on happiness from within. You can feel happy about your situation, your scenario, and every blessing that you have in your life right now. And that will imprint itself in the subconscious mind. And you have to really feel it emotionally. And the external world will reflect that to you. You'll start to meet more happier people. You'll find yourself in more happier scenarios. You'll start to see the good in people that you once saw are negative, and you'll become very close with them. You'll be able to, some of the most interesting and fascinating people that I've met in my life were ones that I had resistance to in the beginning. That is so interesting. Our subconscious mind, when we are negative, will get us to look down upon the people, think negatively about the people that can get us to break through into positivity because it's trying to keep us there in that state, not because we're evil, but that's because how our subconscious mind works. Our subconscious mind does not make decisions, does not know the difference between good and bad. It just takes whatever is programmed from the conscious mind and internalizes as truth and creates the reality based on it. This is some fascinating stuff. If you start to look at reality this way, then 
you're going to be in for a very interesting ride because you create your own reality. And you must 100% believe so to really tap into the power. If you've got doubts, you won't tap into the power. If you've got doubts about creating your own reality, then you will further imprint doubts into your subconscious mind. And your, the subconscious mind is going to create a reality full of doubts. It's going to place you around people that share your doubts. Let's talk about dealing with others. We always want to attract relationships, friendships, business partners, etc. that are going to further our goals, help us hit higher levels of success, bring us great joy and happiness. And the key to it is to be very clear as to what you want as far as your highest goals and understand that the people that show up in your lives are going to complement that. Or they might take you away from it if you're not focused enough on your goal. When people come into your life and they take you away from your goal, it's because you let them. You were not focused enough. You didn't instill and imprint in your subconscious mind that that's what was the most important to you. The moment you do that, and you have no doubt and you got full faith, then watch as people show up in your life who help further your goals. They contribute to your goals. That includes your relationships, your friendships, your business partners, etc. I know this, I speak from personal experience. The more that I have been imprinting what I want in my subconscious mind, the less I have been trying to get people to come to me and the more I find myself gravitating to certain people and certain people gravitating towards me. That's because my subconscious mind will act through my intuition to tell me who to talk to. I know it seems like a bold claim, but if you talk to certain people who are really good with this stuff, they'll reveal it to be the, the case. And I speak from personal experience. But you have to know exactly what you want. And what you want can change in different times of your life. But the key, and I recommend you do this as homework, is listen to The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. Listen to it over and over and over again and fully listen to it, be present, and take action on what he talks about. Pick one goal. It doesn't matter what it is, the first one that comes to mind, and stick with it. It is from that place that you will find success in everything else because he talks about success being a realization of a worthy ideal. Okay, a lot of people want to find like their main purpose or their one thing that they're destined to do in their life. And maybe sometimes you'll find that sooner than later. It wasn't the case for me. But one thing I did know is every time I set a goal, the next goal became clearer to me of what I should be doing. But I had to start somewhere. Pick one goal that's worthy that is going to challenge you that you've never done before and stick with it. Affirm that you are going to achieve that goal into your subconscious mind by affirmations and visualization, uh, visualizations. Essentially, follow, uh, follow the instructions in The Stranger's Secret. If you do so, people and situations are going to show up in your life to complement that goal. That's how you connect well with others. People are in your lives not for you to take from them, but for you to share life experiences in a way that contributes towards your goal, your purpose. So you attract the right mate by dwelling on the qualities and characteristics you admire in a woman or a man, and then your subconscious mind will bring you together in divine order. Now I said, start with your vision, number one goal first, and then from there, you will be able to find out clearer what you want in a relationship. Think about that. If you don't do your number one purpose first or your number one goal, the high level goal beyond you know, trying to attract a perfect person, then you're going to pick all these qualities. And then when you attract that person, you're going to say, you know, I don't really like these qualities. Or I like some of these qualities, I don't like the other ones. That's because when people have qualities, the qualities are there to teach you about yourself. They're, yeah, there to give you happiness and make your life fulfilling, but they're there to, to litmus test and show you where you are in life. And if you don't have a high level goal, then what are you basing, up, basing it up against? However, when you do have your high level goal, then that list is going to come to you. And then you must believe you are worthy of that person. And if you believe you're worthy of your goal, then you're going to be worthy of that person because that person is not there for selfish reasons. That person is there to contribute to your goal and you are there to contribute to theirs. It's amazing how everything in the universe lines up when you have purpose. 
Your subconscious mind is a recording machine which produces your habitual thinking. Think good of another and you will be actually thinking good about yourself. And on the flip side, if you think negative about your partner or your clients or your whoever, then you're going to be thinking negative about yourself. So catch yourself when you're thinking negative about anyone in your life and say, by, th- by me thinking negative about this person, doesn't matter who it is, if you know them, or you read about them in the news, it doesn't matter. When you think negative about that person, you're saying that you don't think positive about yourself and you are imprinting that into your subconscious mind. If you think positive about everyone, everyone, if you can look at the positive, and I recognize that some people do evil things and so forth and do bad things, fine. You don't know the full, st- uh, s- full story, but if you focus on the positive, then you're going to instill and imprint in yourself the positivity. And by doing that, you're more likely to take an action that's going to move you towards a goal, which will be a worthy goal. You know, a lot of people want to do things to kind of change the world. My personal opinion, and maybe this is not the best way, is that you change the world by being the best you that you can be, by living by example, not trying to change others, You can never change others by forcefully trying to change the person. You can only be through living through example. Think about how these books were written in the first place. They were written through example. In nowhere in this book does it say you should do this and you should do that. It doesn't say that. It gives you some calibration as to helping you connect to what you want. And the author wrote it through example. Same thing with Napoleon Hill's Thinking Grow Rich. So that being said, it's important to find the good in others, see the good in others, because when you do that, you imprint into your subconscious mind the good in yourself, and your subconscious mind will bring more of that good out. To cheat, rob, or defraud another brings lack, loss, and limitation to yourself. Your subconscious mind records your inner motivations, thoughts, and feelings. These feelings of negative nature, loss, limitation, and trouble come to you in countless ways. Actually, what you do to the other, you are doing to yourself. We talked about this. Imagine the external world is a reflection of who you are. It's a part of who you are. Everybody is a part of who you are. And how you treat the external world, anything within your awareness, people, things, etc., is how you treat yourself. If you start to look at it that way, you won't be conducting yourself in a way that would be negative. Because it's like you'll be messing up your own house. Well, it's a part of you. And if you're trying to create positivity in the world, and you interact in the world in a negative way, then you're affirming negativity or loss or limitation or whatever negative into your own mind with your subconscious mind is going to reflect back to you in the external world. And then you're going to see that and you're going to focus on negativity again and it's going to further affirm that. So you can break the cycle by focusing on positivity, by doing positive things, by saying positive things, by carrying yourself in a positive way towards the external world. And then you will imprint in your subconscious mind that positivity. And the subconscious mind will create it in the external world and it will be reflected back to you. And you got to be disciplined doing it because it takes time. We're all on a journey of this life together to do just that. You are the only thinker in your world. You are responsible for the way you think about the other. Remember, the other person is not responsible for the way you think about him. Your thoughts are reproduced. What you are thinking about the other, what are you thinking about the other fellow? If you attract someone into your life that is negative towards you, then internally and probably not because you're trying to you know, play a cruel joke on yourself or be negative with yourself, maybe from past situations, you hold within your subconscious mind some form of negativity that needed to be expressed and thus was expressed in the external world through that person. At this level of discussion in the book or just studying the subject, you should know that that's the way it is. And so therefore, what you're going to do going forth is you're going to stop the cycle and say, this person is not negative. This person is not out to get me. This person is just reflecting a part of me that I'm projecting outwards that I want to see. They might also be revealing who they are to themselves. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the positive in the situation. And I'm going to focus on that. And by focusing on that, my subconscious mind is going to get me to do the optimal thing 
to get me out of that situation in a positive way. This applies really well when you have conflict with people in the workplace. When somebody is being disrespectful for you, if you take a step back and you say, that disrespect that I'm feeling is really just a part of me that was programmed into my subconscious mind. But now that I'm aware of how the subconscious mind works, I can reprogram that. So I'm going to start right now to stop and say, I see the good in this person and actually look for the good. Even if it's just that they're showing you that you've got this realization that you brought that about them. And then what you do is you think about that and you reflect upon it and you realize that you've overcome it. And you thank yourself for being able to catch that and overcome it and see positivity. And that will go into your subconscious mind. And through the repetition, it will prevent that scenario from happening again. If that kind of scenario happens again, you won't feel that. You won't feel the negativity. And when the other person feels that you feel positive, even if they're trying to project negative, positivity has a more powerful ability to transform reality than negativity. When someone is a little bit positive and another person is very negative, then yeah, you'll see negative take over this dominant frame. But positivity can go even higher and has even more transformative power. So what happens is that when somebody confronts you negative and you are being positive and that's just your way of being, you're not trying to be positive, you've already been programming your subconscious mind to project positivity, is that negativity can't exist because it's not as strong and powerful and sustainable as the positivity. And the positivity flows out through you and transforms them. Your inner speech representing your silent thoughts and feelings is expressed in the reactions of others towards you. So think about this for a moment. This is very important. You might think that others don't like you and are out to get you, but actually what they're doing is they're just reflecting who you are. They're just telling you who you are based on your internal state. You can do a great job pretending to speak really well and uh, you know, articulating words a certain way, but if your subconscious mind is fueled or is riddled with negativity and insecurities, etc., that you are masking with the facade of confidence, that person will pick up on it and re reflect to you. And again, that's a good thing because they're telling you about yourself. They're saying to you, that you essentially can't fool anyone and you need to work on that. When you go to work on those things, they start to, it starts to change. Now, I've noticed this in many areas of my life, business, relationships, dating, so many different areas. When I changed the internal parts of me and then I go and communicate with people, people respond favorably, like instantly. Instantly they respond favorably. Why? because they're reflecting back. They're just reflecting who you are. And a lot of times I could just outrightly do things that might not look like they're the most you know, eloquent forms of communication, but they'll still respond po uh, positively because of where it comes from. It's not what you say, but where it comes from. It's not what you do, but where it comes from. Remember that. And where it comes from is your subconscious mind. And you can reprogram the where it comes from. You can reprogram your subconscious mind to project that authenticity outwards. And even if you're not slick and polished on the exterior, people aren't really looking at that. They're looking at the interior. I mean, some people look at the exterior, but those people won't be in your awareness because you will be about the depth of character and you'll attract people into your life that are about the depth of character. You cannot be hurt by criticism when you know that you are the master of your thoughts, reactions, and emotions. This gives you the opportunity to pray and bless the other, thereby blessing yourself. So again, anything, when it comes to relationships, this section, it's always about who you are. It's never about the other person. If you make it about the other person, you are removing the responsibility and the opportunity to transform yourself to a higher level. Always make it about yourself. Everybody's reflecting to you what you really are deep within your subconscious mind. 
If you get hurt by criticism, then you are not secure of who you are. You don't really know and you don't really value and appreciate the power and magnitude of who you are. You haven't made peace with yourself. You haven't really deeply appreciated who you are. When people give you criticism, there is validity behind it. They could be telling you how to optimize, but they might riddle it with a lot of different emotional things. Might even sound pretty harsh, but if you could look beyond it, then you have transcended and you have overcome. And you are going to a higher level. And you have the ability then to transform the person in front of you because they'll say, wow, this person is not offended by what I'm saying. They might know that they're not saying it in the most eloquent way, but they probably have not come across a person that could be so unconditional and accepting. You are the master of your thoughts, reactions, and emotions. Nothing has meaning unless you give it meaning. You can give it whatever meaning you want. In earlier stages, we look around what everyone else is doing and we assign that meaning to it. At higher levels of realization, we recognize that we can give it whatever meaning we want. Easier said than done, but through programming and repetition, that's how you get the subconscious mind to be on that same page with you. You can program your subconscious mind to re react a certain way, to have certain emotions. If you're in business, for example, and you have to do sales, if you get rejected, you can program your subconscious mind to feel good during that re rejection. And the reality is it is good to feel good during a re rejection because a rejection really is just optimization data. That's all it is. Let's talk about mental blocks. So we have within us success barriers. Whatever we want to achieve in our life, no matter what area it is we want, the things that hold us back are these barriers. So we call them mental blocks, certain areas that we can't see. And other people might be able to see it, but we can't see it because if we could see them, we'd remove them and we'd hit that higher level of success. This is not there because God is playing an evil trick on us. That's not why it's there. This is part of the life journey. Part of the excitement is figuring out the puzzle of yourself to figure out yourself. And we come up with all these concepts and we talk about all these things because we want to figure out ourselves so we can rise up. And this becomes a fun journey. The journey of personal development is fun. It's not something you're doing to get to the end result. You maybe start out with that mentality, but you enjoy the journey because you enjoy every victory and the, the result that comes with every victory as you keep rising up higher, higher, and higher. But these mental blocks are very tricky because in some cases, we might say we want success, and then all of a sudden, we go out to achieve it. We might do the thing, and then all of a sudden, we get distracted and we move on to something else. And we find ourselves constantly getting distracted and moving on to something else. That's a mental block. Another mental block, and there's many of these mental blocks, could be when you learn something, you're looking, about, looking at how somebody else is doing it, that negative thing, rather than looking at yourself and seeing how you're doing it. That's another mental block. Another mental block is, and I've seen some very interesting mental blocks, and I'm sure I do them too. When you have an opportunity to work with someone on a team to produce a result, and then all of a sudden you're about to get success in the project and that person breaks a leg or self-sabotage, something weird happens. Just like, wow, how did that even happen? That person might have actually created that reality based on the mental block because they don't feel that they're actually worthy of their success. So they might say that they do, but they have not deeply imprinted into their subconscious mind that they are deserving of that and that they have full faith that they're going to achieve it. So the subconscious mind comes up with some situation to prevent them from getting it. That's what a mental block is. Understand the only obstacle to your success and achievement is your own thought or mental image. Imagine the goal that you want. Say it to yourself. Do you fully 100% believe it? If you fully 100% believe it, then it's going to happen. If you've got a little bit of doubt, well, your mental image is not in alignment. And there is a remedy for that. We talked about that. Repetition. If something is repeated to you over and over and over again, and the more you believe it each time it's repeated to you, you'll eventually get to the point where you'll believe it firmly. When your attention wanders, bring it back to the contemplation of your good, your goal. Make a habit of this. This is called disciplining the mind. So say you got your goal and you're trying to imprint it into your subconscious mind to make it a new paradigm, a new reality. Well, 
as you go about your day, you'll find yourself having thoughts that are contrary to that goal, consuming information that contradicts the goal, that moves you away from your goal. The key is to catch yourself and bring yourself back on track. The key is to put yourself in situations where there are accountability and people and so forth that will bring you back on track. Because it's by staying on track and consistency and repetition that you further integrate that thought into your subconscious mind. So you have to be conscious and aware. In the beginning, it's kind of hard to always be tracking. But over the long run, it gets easier. Habit is the function of your subconscious mind. There is no greater evidence of this marvelous power of your subconscious mind than the force and sway habit holds in your life. You are a creature of habit. So again, if you want to instill within you the vision into your subconscious mind, if you want to deeply root it into your subconscious mind, then the repetition is key. And the repetition comes through habit. And the habits come over time. They, they get formed. So what I like to do is I like to say, look, what is my goal? And what is my daily routine, either Monday to Friday or Monday to Sunday, to achieve this goal? What are the things I have to do morning till night? And can I get started on it and then ease my way into a routine, a consistent routine that I do day in and day out to wire those habits in, which then I'm not just tackling the programming of my subconscious mind through just the affirmations and visualization, but the actions that affirm those visualizations and the affirmations. So when you've got those habits and you fill up your day with positive actions, positive thoughts, positive information that further internalizes that goal into your subconscious mind, the subconscious mind is now in alignment with infinite intelligence and you will get a lot of magic that happens in your life. Opportunities will just pop up all of a sudden. You'll be able to see things you never saw before that are opportunities that were always there, but you never were able to see it before because you weren't calibrated in your mind. So mental blocks, very important that you make a study of mental blocks and recognize that you have them within you. And one of the biggest, biggest mental blocks is lack of faith. Lack of faith in believing that this works, number one. Number two, lack of faith in believing that there is a power greater than you that you are connected to. We call it infinite intelligence. We talked about that in Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. And that you have access to that infinite intelligence through your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind not only governs the actions you take, but has access to the infinite intelligence to pull out resources that are way beyond the capacity and understanding that you have access to consciously. That means... That whatever you have in your mind, you can create even if you don't know how it's going to happen. Let's talk about fear. Okay? What holds us back to implement, to go down the road towards getting the result we want is fear. What prevents us from programming our subconscious mind in a way that produces lasting results is fear. Do the thing that you're afraid to do and the death of fear is certain. Say to yourself and mean it, I'm going to master this fear, and you will. If you're afraid of closed spaces such as elevators, lecture halls, etc., mentally ride in an elevator, blessing all of its functions, and you'll be amazed how quickly this fear will be dissipated. So athletes do this. They visualize their process. They visualize themselves on game day. They visualize, like swimmers visualize the session. And they imagine, they visualize themselves going through each motion, practicing in the mind over and over and over again towards victory. And you can do this with situations where you're afraid. Visualize yourself doing it. Visualize, visualize yourself going through the actions to overcome that fear. It doesn't mean that you just do that and you don't take action. However, what it means is that you're programming and prepping your subconscious mind to actually go and do it. 
when you repeatedly imagine yourself doing it over and over and over again, your subconscious mind will get you to do it. You'll automatically do it because your, uh, your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's not. It will just create based on what you put into it. Nothing, nothing can disturb you but your own thought. The suggestions, statements, or threats of other people have no power over you. The power is within you, and when your thoughts are focused on what is good, then God's power is with your goods of thought. There is only one creative power, and it moves in harmony. It doesn't matter what you consider God to be like or look like. The point is that there really is an infinite intelligence. It exists. Everything points towards that. And you have access to be able to tap into this infinite intelligence through your thought process, through your subconscious mind. And it is governed by the limiting or empowering thoughts. So for example, if you have thoughts of fear, frustration, anger, resentment, hatred, you are not going to get that connection to infinite intelligence because infinite intelligence does not vibrate in that frequency. If you have thoughts of empowerment, persistence, love, joy, creation, creating value, helping others, and doing good and being of example, well, now you're connecting to infinite intelligence. Now you're impressing within your subconscious mind those qualities, and the subconscious mind opens up the connection to infinite intelligence. Read about it in Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. Let's talk about youthfulness. Youthfulness is not governed by age. Age really just is a number. There are people that I know that are in their 40s that are in far greater health and vibrancy, have better skin texture, etc. than those in their early 20s. Why? Because they take care of themselves. But more importantly, one of the things that I found that really, really taps into youthfulness, lasting youthfulness, is goals. It's a vision that you want to see something happen in reality, something that you don't know how you're going to create it, but you know you're going to create it. Something interesting happens. You imprint that onto your subconscious mind, and your subconscious mind is going to revitalize you. It's going to bring you to life. And the voice that you have, the actions that you take, it's going to spring you forward. And what you're going to be able to create is going to be driven by such passion that it's, it's amazing. And your body, the look in your eyes, the energy, everything transforms to give you everything you need to make that goal a reality. When we're very young, let's say we're you know, teenage years, early 20s, whatever. I'm 36 now. We're well connected to this source just because we come right out of the box with a lot of passion. And you know, that's why people that are really young have a lot of zest and passion for life. But as they age, you know, through numbers, they get into their 30s, etc., their passions start to go away. Now they're just going into a routine. And they give up on a lot of their dreams. And as a result of giving up on a lot of dreams, they don't really have any worthy ideals, as, as Earl Nightingale talks about. And now the body just starts to age. Their mind starts to age. They start to look like there's no fire in them. They're, they're, there's no light in their eyes. And they're imprinting that into the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is creating more of that. So real youthfulness comes from a worthy ideal, a passion and zest towards achieving a goal. And that goal has to be challenging at a high level and one that brings out the best in you. When you take that goal and you impress that onto subconscious mind through affirmation, through visualization, your subconscious mind goes to work and wakes you up. It gives you the energy. It pulls out the passion from within you and you begin to move forward. And you, become, you become youthful what real youthfulness means. You might even notice that your skin texture will change. The look in your eyes, the glow will be back. You might even notice that you're more energized. You will start getting healthier physically. You might reach out for better foods because you recognize that 
You want to give it your all. So you'll start eating healthier. You'll start exercising. All these interesting things will happen to you when you use the power of the subconscious mind. Hope you enjoyed this video. I really recommend that you read this book. It's going to have a really profound impact on you if you are interested in achieving success. Thank you very much for watching. If you need a copy of this mind map, it's at the bottom of this video. I will talk with you soon. Take care.